I live in the community, the Lindale community, which there is a high rate of gangs. I grew up in a lot of different communities, but the communities I grew up in was rough, project-ish. My community is pretty much bad. Within the last two months, it's just been really crazy. Within two weeks' time, six boys got killed. Living in a community with gangs, it, it doesn't affect me personally, but it affects my community because so like most of the violent most of the violence that occurs it happens during with gangs. Gangs are the cause of it. I think gangs are in this community because of the high property rate. It's it's not a lot of high schools in this community or not a lot of um, youth centers, um, the young males can go to. No jobs. When people don't have jobs, then what are they going to do? So they turn to, to, to gangs as their support and as their safety. So this whole notion, when you look at the connection between class and street organizations slash gangs, and I think it's actually to look at it at a triple-pronged space. So class, race, and uh, street organizations. Uh, the major contributing factors to um, gang formation, number one, poverty, number two, poor education, number three, uh, lack of jobs, number four, poor uh, uh, housing opportunities. And a lot of times, because many communities that are referenced as poor may not have the same resources, they have to create they have to create their own spaces where they can protect themselves and at the same time support community members. And a lot of times I think that they are in many cases allowed to flourish in particular areas because in some instances that's all folks have. That's all folks may have or more importantly that's all folks might think they have. Look at the role of, of housing. You tear down public housing in Chicago. You demolish all the public housing. You push the people out. You push them into other communities that don't have any resources. And what you think is going to happen? It's going to be tension and friction, and it's going to turn into gangbanging. Combine that with not having access to uh, particular uh, spaces in the city. You think about that, about unemployment. You think about unemployment generationally, you think about low quality education in those spaces where young folks are not valued and are able to see the outside world and how they can contribute to improving it, then you create almost a perfect storm that could actually allow for organizations that may not have the best intentions for the community to flourish. That's why we got all this violence going on. So look at the city. Blame them. Blame daily. You know, don't just blame the kids. Um, uh, it's a lot of blame to go around, you know, uh, but right now it seems to be, you know, just focus on kids in our community and locking them up. And I think that's a big mistake. So we very rarely think about, say, the first Daly, who was mayor of Chicago, as a member of a quote unquote gang. Some people would even argue that, like, Mayor Daly's father was in a gang. You know, the first Mayor Daly was in a gang called the Hamburg Group. But we know that the Hamburgs actually were formed in response, not just as an athletic club, but in response to police brutality. But they were able to take their gang and turn it into political, a political organization. So if we look at organizations like Latin Kings, uh, some, uh, you know, the Imperial Counts or the Chaplains, these are older uh, structures, um, street organizations in Chicago. They, in many cases, were formed to do, to protect the neighborhood and to protect themselves from police. They did positive things in the 50s and 60s, and the leadership uh, of the organizations was stronger. You know, so the leaders of the gangs in the 50s and 60s, when they when they said something, it uh, it was it was the law for everybody in the gang. Affiliations are much looser than they were 20, 30 years ago. But at the same time, 
there is a level of organization. In the 70s, the government uh, targeted gang leaders uh, in the war on drugs. So a lot of the gang leaders got taken off the street. Guys like Larry Hoover, Bobby Gore from out west. All of these guys, they got locked up. And when, you, when the, the leaders got locked up, it left the streets disorganized. The guys on the streets didn't have any leaders to, to lead them. Gangs denote this notion around just a group of young folks running around, breaking stuff, robbing people, beating folks up. That might be part of the situation and the condition, but I think it's really important to understand those spaces as organized. Today, what you have is the guys that are out here on the street today, they don't honor the, the, the former leaders and the former mission of the gangs. Like if you look at the, the laws and the mission of the vice lords, it talks about how they were, uh, their goal was to improve the community. Of today, we don't have guys, we have guys out here they don't respect the leadership, they do what they want to do, it's different renegade groups, um, and they fight with each other over petty things, um, uh, mainly drug, turf, and that type of thing, and that's what has happened. So no, they don't honor what happened. Uh, they're not like the gangs were, the gangs today are not like they were in the, um, in the past. Popular culture has a major influence on uh, gang formation and gang ident identity and gang culture, so to speak. I know, like, the music that I listen to, they talk about gangs, being a part of the gang or the gang that they used to be in. And I know, like, a lot of the things that rappers do, people, well, young men that are part of the gangs, they portray the same things on the outside world. I think the media affects teens' lives, like, it's a, it's a very big impact on teens because, you know, teens, Teens nowadays, they don't really have that much, you know, good influences. So they look towards all the people, all the famous people and um, all the rich people and stuff they, that they see on TV. That's the only, um, that's the only, like, their only choice, I guess. A lot of the gangster rappers like Lil Wayne and them and Rick Ross and Jay-Z and 50 Cent and Eminem and Dr. Dre, that same record company, the Universal Music Group, is also owned by General Electric, which is the major owner and operator and investor in, in private prisons. So on one hand, they build in prisons where these guys are going to, private prisons, and on the other hand, they are producing music that creates a climate and culture of criminality that leads guys to go to prison. I'll never forget when uh, I first heard the rap group N.W.A., Niggas With Attitudes, which was really considered the first gangster rap group. But these guys began to rap about gang banging, set tripping, selling drugs, uh, uh, doing violence, doing drive-by shootings. And because it was a part of popular culture, what happened was that kind of activity and that kind of behavior became popular for young people. Gangs, I don't know, they're very popular nowadays. You, 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 you are cool, you're cool if you're in a gang, you're popular. In the game. And so now you got kids who really you don't don't even grow up in the hood who want to identify with being a gangbanger, and I think that contributes to the large growth of, of street gangs. To stop gang violence as a community, I think that we should have more after school programs like parks and different things like that. Talk to these children especially the young ones that's, that's in it. Talk to them, let them know that this is not the life that you want to live. You don't know where you might end up if you join a gang. You don't know the outcome and result of it. So while you're ahead, just stop, think about it before you even try to put yourself in a position that you know you will not be able to get yourself out of. Also, we should have more police enforcement because I feel as if, if the police could do something to stop the gang violence. Providing a quality education, providing young folks with activity before and after school, and actually listen, listening to young folks about their issues and concerns, and creating programs based on their expressed issues and concerns. And I've been running in the streets all day. And I've been looking at the stars all night
It got me thinking, how can I get away? It got me thinking about a perfect day. And I could tell you something we both know. We can hustle, but the streets get cold. And I've been thinking, how can I get away? It got me thinking about a perfect day.